And welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. The Messages of Inspirational Stories is proudly brought to you today by the good guys at the sixminutewebinar.com. Oh my goodness. When I talk about the sixminutewebinar.com, I mean, folks, I get a big smile on my face. And the reason why I had to speak and I was invited to speak, didn't have to, I was invited, which was an honor, to speak at a summit over in India. And the King of Almond was a guest of honor. So I'm thinking, okay, I want to sound intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> and as Rennie really can tell you with me, that's kind of like pushing a chain up. <laughs> <laughs> but what I did, I took the six minute webinar and I'm going to give you a free gift here in just a second. So hang with me. I'm going someplace with this. I took this six minute webinar and I just filled it out. And there's a lot of stuff that I got rid of that I didn't need. OK. And what I did, I used that as my presentation. For that summit. And that led to another thing and to another thing and another thing. And now the six minute webinar is co-sponsoring the summit, the uh, what they call that thing, learning and uh, <laughs> I got my I got my cheat sheet right here, ladies and gentlemen. I write stuff down so I don't forget because my mind is like a steel trap, nothing in and nothing out. <laughs> Leadership and Commitment Summit on 20, uh, 2021. It's an association with the six minute webinar and E360 TV. Our studio here on E360 TV is going to televise that all over the world. The dates are August the 27th, the 28th, and the 29th. That's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And just like now, we're broadcasting live. We're on Roku. There's a lot of folks that watch us on Roku. We want to say thank you for watching the show, and we appreciate it very much. And people are also watch us on Apple Fire and <laughs> Android TV, Apple TV, and even Grandma's TV. You know? <laughs> and we appreciate that. But the summit's going to be on educators, corporate uh, personnel and entrepreneurs. And like I say, uh, we're going to be broadcasting that. Our, our TV show, Messages of Inspirational Stories, is the host of the summit. And we're going to be broadcasting it through E360 TV studios. And Vanya Kusick, it's Vanya Kusick Foundation, is actually putting on this great summit. And she's got us into about 50 countries on our own. And E360 TV with their branded channels that I just mentioned, in addition to all the other channels we're on, Twitch and Periscope and YouTube Live, LinkedIn, uh, Facebook Live. We broadcast live every show broadcast to millions of devices around the world. And so thank you very much for tuning in. And I've got to say a thank you to our guest of honor today, Mr. Rennie Gabriel. He's been with us all week. This is part three. It's kind of like Mambo number five. I missed the first four Mambos, so maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but wealth on any income. My goodness gracious. I may put your website up there because you've got a book called Wealth on Any Income. And, and all anybody's got to do is just go to wealthonanyincome.com. They can get your book, 100% of the profits. Where do they go? To the Jim Grant uh, Foundation? Uh, no, sorry, Jim. <laughs> they go to uh, a charity that uh, touches my heart because it saves two lives at a time. Mm -hmm. It's a charity that rescues dogs from environments where they could have been euthanized and trains them as service animals for soldiers who've come back with PTSD, traumatic brain injuries, or other mm -hmm. issues that could have otherwise committed suicide. Yeah. And figuring the suicide rate among our returning veterans is about 22 a day, almost one an hour. And not one who has received their service dog has committed suicide. This charity is saving two lives at a time. So I'm just honored to be one of their major donors and donate 100% of the profits from the work I do, creating more philanthropists. There you go. And on yesterday's show, we were talking a little bit about SMART, S-M-A-R-T. And this shows you how smart that I am. I knew that S stood for being specific. And the A, well, that stands for action. R means you got to be realistic, not some pie in the sky. 
T, you got to have a timeline. You got to have a deadline on that time. Not one of these days or a couple of years from now. You got to be specific, like six months, one year, two years. And the M, showing you how smart I am. What does the M stand for? I forgot to write it down. <laughs> Measurement, uh, measurable. You want to have a goal that is measurable. Mm -hmm. And what I'm saying is that, um, like, you know, specific and measurable kind of go along the lines together. Mm -hmm. uh, like specific could be a specific amount of money. Mm -hmm. Measure, and it needs, you want to be able to measure it. I mean, mm -hmm. more money is not specific. Mm -mm. $10,000 no. is specific and measurable. Yeah. Yeah. More money is like say, well, when I win the lottery, well, good luck with that. <laughs> if you did, I lost my ticket and you found it. So, please. <laughs> <laughs> but most importantly, it is so important in life to set a goal, set a time limit, make sure it's realistic. And there's one other ingredient that Rennie has talked about this week that is very, very important. Your success is a team effort. And Rennie, I'm so glad that you brought that out to the folks. And when we say a team effort, uh, share with them a little bit what that means. Um, I could give you, I'll give you some examples from uh, business in general and then uh, specific mm -hmm. for my situation. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of people have heard of Warren Buffett. And very mm -hmm. few people have heard of Charlie Munger, but it just so happens he's half of Berkshire Hathaway and Warren Buffett would be considered a visionary. Mm -hmm. and Charlie Munger is generally considered to be the execution master. He executes on Warren's vision. You've got Elon Musk. I mean, he's not running, you know, SpaceX. He doesn't even know how to build a car. But he has people who do know and have expertise in those areas. Mm -hmm. um, you've got Steve Jobs, who's passed away. But when he was building Apple, it was him and Steve Wozniak, two people who had different skill sets to build very successful businesses. Mm -hmm. And in my situation, um, after I'm broke at age 50 and trying to put my life back together, after three years, I saved up $18,000 by doing something I recommend all people do, which is treat themselves like they matter and pay themselves first. Amen. I'll touch on that again today. Mm -hmm. And I'd saved up $18,000 when my wife's realtor friend came and said, you ought to buy this three unit building. $18,000 doesn't buy anything in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. not even 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. So my wife chipped in 18,000. The realtor said, you know, this is such a good deal. I'm chipping in 36,000. And it took the three of us to put together the down payment and buy the property. Wow. That's what I mean by a team. Uh -huh. And we stayed together for 10 years, buying multi-unit residential properties together. Mm -hmm. He found them. I managed them. That kind of team effort produced millions of dollars of net mm -hmm. worth yeah. coming from broke at age 50. That's amazing because he he had the eye to see and he had the specialized experience to know, hey, this is a good horse. We should buy this one here. Yep. And he found building after building mm -hmm. <clears throat> that we could buy. And what we focused on was buildings that had... Uh, maintenance issues and were mismanaged. Mm -hmm. So I brought good management to it. He had ideas about how to improve them in terms of the maintenance issues that were lacking. Mm -hmm. And we made tremendous profits on these buildings. Yeah. And what's amazing is that when you think about that and you think about your current situation, you probably feel like you're stuck on an island or in some cubicle by yourself, who is it that you know that has that unique ability, that gift that, you know, you don't have because you know where you lack. I mean, no one had to tap me on the shoulder and say, Jim, you don't know anything about building a website. I mean, I figured that one out on my own. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's uh, so therefore I look for someone that's got 
the ability to do a website, to understand what I'm saying and have the vision to see it. That's, it doesn't That's, matter if you're talking uh, about business, right. you're talking about creating wealth. Uh, it, mm -hmm. doesn't talk, it doesn't matter if you're even dealing with a relationship issue. Mm -hmm. It's that team effort that produces the result instead of yep. it being a solo sport. It really does. And today, day three, I'm just doing a quick little recap here very quickly. Day one, we talked about the problem and, you know, how people do not have the training to balance a checkbook or to get out of debt. And yesterday we talked a little bit about the big picture versus the, you know, the seeing the far, you can't see the forest for the trees, that sort of thing. <laughs> and the big picture is, I used the example yesterday, if I remember correctly, counting cars. Danny yes. Coker, I love that show because Danny can look at a wreck and he'll say, yeah, this, you know, this thing's got potential. Oh, I see it. I visualize it. And Kevin and his other workers there, they said, well, look at that rust spot. I mean, that's going to, you know, oh, gosh, we got to replace all this. we got to do this, that, and the other. He's looking at the big picture. Most people are looking at the scrapes, the bumps. They're looking at all of the little things that will have to be corrected to brighten the picture. When an artist starts out painting a beautiful picture, he starts out with one stroke at a time, doesn't he? That's right. And now, those are the details, mm -hmm. but he has a big picture in mind when he's mm -hmm. working on those details. And yes. that's exactly what we were talking about. And it, mm -hmm. that's so great. And it also uh, reinforces the comment about it's a team effort, not a solo sport. Right. He can see the vision, but he's not going to do all the work. Mm -hmm. Exactly. He's got people that, uh, you know, that or body, you know, the engine experts. Yeah. Body experts, pain experts, I mean, uh, artists, because a, a guy could be a great mechanic, but you used to have him start spray painting a car oh. or, or pinstriping a car. Uh, you better turn the lights out if you want it to look good and only drive it at night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, that's it. Yeah. And uh, let's see, what else did we cover yesterday? I'm looking here at my notes here. You know, we we talked about that and how. Couples and money, you know, mm -hmm. exercise and, you know, and we just write down your personal five-year financial goal. That's right. And we and did touch on paradigms. Yes, we did. Structures that are in people's way yeah. that they need to be aware of before they even get started. And mm -hmm. some of those things could have been imposed upon them by parents, mm -hmm. siblings, school teachers, mm -hmm. counselors. Yeah. And these people weren't even experts. No, not at all. And I love the examples you give. I can't remember their names now. Uh, let's see, was it Beck or Deck, the guy the, uh, with uh, the computers and the world could only hold? Or, or, That's, yeah, Tom Watson. Tom Watson, okay. I, President of IBM. There thought we go. The whole world could only support five computers. <laughs> Oh, uh, boy. I mean, you would think right there, if they're in a computer business, that, that the uh, the people in the head shed and the stockholders would say, I think we need to get a relief pitcher in here. <laughs> We're going to lose this game if we don't. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And it's, it's really amazing how we can build up myths. And one thing you got to be aware of with the myth is that when someone tries to show you that there is um, that the myth has holes in it and it's not really true. Don't get on the defensive because naturally in the natural world, we want to protect our myth. We want yes. to protect our belief that will train wreck you 100% of the time. That's correct. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I don't remember if we touched on it, but, you know, wealthy people have different ways of thinking and a little bit. hearing familiar information yeah. than ordinary people. And yeah. talking about being defensive or talking about making a statement like I've heard that before. Or, that's not mm -hmm. new to me. Mm -hmm. Doesn't produce results. Mm -mm. Well, and, and one of the important things that we're going to talk about today are the forms for people to use mm. uh, that it took sadly, took me years to figure out and create 
so that I could move from a place of struggle with money to a place where I don't have to work for a living anymore. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Because uh, one final thing I'd like to say about uh, when someone attacks the myths, I forget who the lady was. We had her on a TV show. I, I believe it was Olga Belova, but I'm not sure because it's been several months ago. But she says the one percenters in life, they migrate to people that challenge them. Hmm. You think about that, you know, like, like because if someone's just saying, hey, you're doing a great job, you're doing this, you're OK, ba -da 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 -da, you can't grow. No, the one percenters know that. If someone says, you know, hey, that's not right. I mean, you should take this here. This is this is, to, you, you know, they're open minded. That's right. They and make the decision based on their gut. Yes. Because the fence comes out of the head. <laughs> OK. Yeah, that, that, that's not the best. You know, for a lot of people, the mind is a dangerous neighborhood to go into alone. <laughs> Isn't that the truth, you know? And uh, a lot of people have some canyons in their minds. You know, yeah. I mean, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be rude or anything, but I mean, uh, some of the old world beliefs that's been handed down from generation to generation to generation. I grew up believing because I was told ever since I was knee high to a duck that cleanliness is next to what? A godliness. Yes. And I thought that was scripture, mm -hmm. but it was gospel according to my mother, <laughs> her family. And you better not come in this house with 30 feet. Mm. Don't you know cleanliness is next to godliness? That was a huge standard. <laughs> But I mean, that's a classic example of how we can get so lost in a world of fabrication. Well, here's something that I remember my parents telling me <clears throat> when I was little. It's around money. And it was that, you know, money doesn't grow on trees. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I have to be more frugal and that kind of stuff. Well, guess what? Um, one of my best friends for years grew money on trees. He mm -hmm. had an orange orchard. Yeah. He was growing money on trees. <laughs> okay. So it's all in how you look at it. That's right. That's exactly right. And I love the day mm -hmm. you're going to get into giving us the financial tools. Yes. Of how we can get from where we are to where we want to be, because we've already set our goals. We've already know we're going to, you know, we, we're going to need help. We want to be a, it's a team sport. We want good team players. When we take the field, we know who's going to go on first base, who's going to be pitching, who's going to be catching. And there's, that's already cut and dried. So yep. now you need to know the tools. Exactly. And so as we spoke about early on, there's only three secrets to the wealthy. It's their mm -hmm. attitude. We've talked about that. The right. form, we're going to talk about that today. And the investments, we'll talk about that tomorrow. Amen. Okay, so I'm going to share the screen. Hopefully this works like I know what I'm doing. Okay. Uh, it says share screen. Okay. Uh, and I don't see anything there to, okay. to, to share. So I guess I got to do something first. Okay, let me, let me try it here. Okay. Oh, wait a second. I see something there. Oh, Hold okay. Mm -hmm. Let, let's click share again. Mm -hmm. And okay, no. Hold on. I'm going to put something up and okay. okay. Stop share. Okay. Okay. Now let me have you hit the share button and see if this works. All right. And what have we got up on the screen? Uh, let's see here. Hmm. I tell you what, you add it to your share screen and I'll add it okay. to the screen. That's way to work. Okay. We okay. very seldom do this, but you know, we're, we don't know everything, so we don't have a subject matter expert in here. With us. <laughs> yeah, the technology is not my forte. I just got done telling you I don't know anything about websites either. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Go ahead and share your screen, and I'll add it to there. I think that's the All right. Easiest. Well, I, I am okay. All right. to do that. How about that? Oh, that that's not working at all. Let's okay. see. Okay. So I'm stopping the share. Okay. Um, I am going – because, I mean, when I click – Let's see. Hold on a sec. 
Uh, okay, I've got something up on the screen that I want. I am okay. going to click share okay. and hopefully it shows up. Did you do that? It doesn't. Hmm. Okay. All right. All right. So I'm going to talk about it. And I'm going to okay. talk about it from the standpoint of uh, something a lot of people have heard about, and it's called the snowball method. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know who came up with that title after I figured this out 20 years ago, and I don't care. Mm -hmm. The point is, what I came up with 20, 25 years ago or longer, I don't remember, has been copied by hundreds and hundreds of people. And if you've got credit card debt mm -hmm. and you want to get rid of it, it is the easiest way to do it. You list your credit cards on a piece of paper. I was trying to show you the form. It didn't work. List it on a, a piece of paper. I will tell you uh, what to have on it. So you'll have um, five columns. One will have the creditor. Is it a Visa, MasterCard, Sears, whatever? Second column will say, what is the total balance that you owe? Third column will be what the interest rate is that you you're paying. The fourth column is what is the minimum payment you need to make? Mm -hmm. And the last column says payment made, which is going to be higher than your minimum payment. But you're not going to do this on all of the cards or all of the debts. You're only going to add extra money to the balance that is the absolute lowest. And I don't care what the interest rate is. The interest rate could be low. The interest rate could be high. It makes no difference. You focus any extra money on the lowest balance. And when you wipe it out, that feels great. Mm. You've gotten rid of a creditor. So now you add the money of your minimum payment and the amount you added, and you tackle the second lowest balance. And you just keep doing that till the debts are paid off. Now, here's a warning. The warning is you don't focus on paying off credit card debt at the expense of growing your net worth by saving and investing. Mm -hmm. And too many people focus only on getting rid of their debt. And for some reason, they think if they're debt free, they've created financial freedom. And that's not true. I, I won't say that's a myth. I'll say it's a lie. <laughs> Yeah. Jim, let me ask you a question because mm -hmm. I think this is, let's say, now I'm not talking about anything you have okay. other than if you had no debts, no car loans, no credit card debts, no mortgages. Mm -hmm. If you had no debt, would you have financial freedom? Would you have the ability not to work anymore? No, not really, because uh, you got to have multiple streams of income that's at being able to expand. And if well, you're like, if you're like even most if it's people, not multiple, at least yeah. one, or yeah. how are you going to buy groceries? Yeah, exactly. How are you going to pay your utilities? Yeah, because inflation is not prices going up, it's the American dollar's buying power on the world market. And that's why, you know, a gas has went up over a dollar oh, a gallon in yeah. the last, you know, several months. <laughs> yeah. So, what I'm getting at is if you had no debts, you'd mm -hmm. still have to work for a living. Yeah. To pay for gasoline, to yeah. buy food, to sure. pay for utilities. Mm -hmm. And so the only way to create financial freedom is to build assets that generate an income for you. Yes, you're right. Because I call all that COB, C-O-B. Mm, yeah. What's C-O-B yeah. stand for? I used to call it C uh, cost of business. When I was ah. in business, that's the COB. You know, that's the, that's the co C-O-L is a cost of living because... It doesn't matter if you don't have any credit card debt. Are you still going to have electric bill? Yeah, darn right. Yeah. And so when people focus only on becoming debt free and not mm -hmm. building assets that will generate an income, they'll end up having to work for the rest of their life, even if they mm -hmm. have no debt. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So that was uh, the first form that I wanted to talk about. Uh, the second form is let's, let's try that again. Hit your share button and let's see if we can add it to the oh, stream. Okay. Let's uh, try that again. Let me, okay. We'll try that again. Let me go to here. I'm this is the third time, share. ladies and gentlemen. So three times might be the charm. Share screen. Okay. And nope, doesn't happen. But you know what? 
Anyone who wants these forms, if, if they can't see them on the screen, can send an email to me, Rennie at wealthonanyincome.com, and mm -hmm. I'll just send the forms out to them. Yeah. Okay, I'll email it out. They send me an email. I'll just attach them to an email. Okay, great, great. Right. And I'm sorry that didn't work, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yeah, if it were Zoom, I could have figured it out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this this uh, this setup here is a little bit different. And, uh, of course, we're interfaced with the E360 TV studios. And so it's uh, things have to kind of like be preloaded, if that makes sense. And just yeah. like my intelligence should be preloaded. So that's probably <laughs> the, the disconnect there, my man. Yeah, but, we, we ought to have, we should have had a conversation about this ahead of time, how to share screen. Yeah, yeah. But what I can still talk people through it. And the second item allows people to see how close they are to having mm -hmm. complete financial choice. They probably mm -hmm. heard of it. It's called a balance sheet. Mm -hmm. It's where on the left side, you list everything you own. Mm -hmm. And on the right side, you list everything you owe. Mm -hmm. And when you subtract what you owe from what you own, you're left with what's called net worth. Mm -hmm. And correct. now, that while that might be a nice number when you first do it, there are things in that left column that are assets that don't generate an income. That's right. And That's you need right. to look for the things that do or the mm -hmm. things you can make generate an income. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if the only thing you have on the, the left side is the equity in a house, yeah, uh, that net worth figure ain't going to buy groceries. No, it's not. And so it's got to be able to generate an income. And that's mm -hmm. how wealthy people look at yeah. their assets versus liabilities. What mm -hmm. assets generate an income? That's right, because you're, yeah, that's a great point, because a lot of people look at their net worth uh, based on their the equity that they have in something. But I mean, your house, my goodness gracious, that's where you live. That is not, you know, it's, it's kind of like, a, you know, trying to buy a brand new car for a good investment. Well, if you're going to keep it 10 years and, and drive it, you know, and hopefully get your mileage out without any major repairs, that would be a good exchange for your money. It's not a good investment, but a good no, exchange no, okay. for your money. It's not, it's not generating an income right. when you buy a car. Right. All it does is depreciate. So you're hoping you uh, you get your you, you get value out of what you purchase. But yeah, because uh, a lot of people have a false insecurity. Okay, yeah, you you got a net worth of this. Okay, fine. But can you? I like to explain it like this. When I was in business. My cash flow run that manufacturing business was always on the anemic side. Mm. I look at my accounts receivable, but I, I dealt with these big companies, you know, Fortune 100, 200 companies, things mm -hmm. like that. And when their purchase agents call you, the only thing they can give you is a PO, a purchase order yeah. number. And it may take 30, 60, 90 days, depending on each company has its own rules. Well, in the meantime, if you sell, you know, your goods to a company and they pay their bills on 110 days, which one company did, just like clockwork, but it's 110 mm -hmm. days. What I'm doing, when you stop and think about it, I'm loaning them money. Oh, yeah. That's absolutely zero, right. At zero percent interest because yep. I got to pay my bills within 30 days. Mm -hmm. so that's what kept my cash flow in a negative thing. That's what robs small business owners from being able to expand because your, your cash flow is the blood of your business. Yeah. If you're anemic and physically anemic, you're not going to run no 26 mile marathon. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you only get so much down the road to your, you know, till they call the medics on you. you yeah. Know? You've used up all your oxygen. <laughs> yeah, you have. And uh, that's a good way of looking at it because when it comes to your assets, I mean, it'll make you feel good but it won't buy a biscuit for you. Rennie, did your, did your uh, screen oh, freeze there? Uh, yeah. I thought it was your screen that froze up. I didn't know whose screen froze. I'm so old. I might freeze up, you know, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm in, I mean, we're going through a heat wave here, so I ain't freezing up. I can tell you that. I hear you, brother. I hear you. Well, so the, the next tool, 
uh, once you figured out what you own and what you owe is where is your money coming from mm. and where are you spending it? Now there's some important items here. And what I'm getting at is too many people look at their income from a job. That's mm -hmm. one source. They got a hundred percent of their income dependent on one source, which mm -hmm. is for me too, I'm too insecure for that. Mm -hmm. Um, but there are other things you can have that generate an income. Maybe you have a job that pays bonuses or commissions, or maybe you bought a piece of rental property, and you got rental income, or you've set aside money in a savings account, you're getting interest, or you bought stocks and you're getting dividends, or you've loaned money to someone else and you've taken a note back and they're paying you interest on that. Or maybe mm -hmm. you've created a book or a, a, a a record or an album or a mm -hmm. movie, and you've got royalty income from that or passive oh, income yeah. from that. There could be a side business. Maybe you're involved in a multi-level network marketing or direct sales company. So mm -hmm. as a side business, maybe there's a tr trust distributions you're getting, social security. Maybe you've got a retirement plan. What you're hearing is you want to have and can have more than one source of income. You better anyway. Yeah. If, if you're smart. I mean, even in a business, mm -hmm. if you have a bunch of clients and if one of them leaves you, are you still okay? Mm -hmm. Or do you only have one client in your business? Mm -hmm. So, those are the kinds of things to look at when it comes to income. Now, in terms of expenses, instead of talking about business expenses, which is, can be a part of this, we're going to talk about personal expenses. As an example, on the form that I provided my students at UCLA, I have stars next to the items that don't show up each month because people forget about that. Maybe they only pay property taxes twice a year mm -hmm. where they should calculate how much do they need to set aside every month or back to school clothes for their kids. Maybe it's once a year. But if it's $1,200, that's $100 a month that mm -hmm. ought to that's be set right. aside to spend later. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's how I've designed this income and expense or cash flow form. Mm -hmm. And that's the uh, uh, what I want to call the, um, the third tool that the wealthy use. And I'll give you mm -hmm. a good example. Um, a lot of you have heard of John D. Rockefeller. The uh, fellow who started Standard Oil Company, oh, mm -hmm. one of the wealthiest men in the world while he was alive. Mm -hmm. Guess what? I happened to see a, um, a ledger that he kept when he was 11 years of age. And in it, he tracked where every penny in his life came from and where he spent every penny. Now, granted, in 1850, a penny was money. Yes. Okay? Yes. But the point is, that habit continued with him even when he was a multi-billionaire. Mm. He yeah. still knew where all the money was coming from and where all of the money was getting spent. And the moral of that story is money did not change him. No. And that's, that's to be your, one of your goals in life to be true to your school and no matter what happens, you know, if you're if you really expand, you're blessed with income, you don't change who you are or how you got there. I mean, have you ever known anybody that's a, a, a great baseball player, can hit 40 home runs uh, a season or 50 home runs a season, whatever, and they go up to the plate and, and do not have their bat in their hands? <laughs> you know, I mean. I mean, because sometimes we get so cocky, hey, we can do this just by showing up. Look at football. Look at a football team when they think you're going there overconfident. Oh, this is kind of like a weekend off. We can beat these guys easy. And they get creamed yeah. because they stopped being who they were. And that's so, that's so important. And it, it's just so great for us to have this wonderful information. But go to wealthoneanyincome.com. And I'm going to ask Rennie to show his book that he wrote, oh. WealthOnAnyIncome.com. He will send you those forms and look at that beautiful book. If you buy that book from, from his website, 100% of the proceeds, the profits, 
will go directly to sheltertosoldier.org. That's where two lives are saved at the same time. A dog from being put to sleep and a soldier from committing suicide. If you know, and that should inspire somebody out there to go, hello, we could use service dogs for all kinds of situations. Amen. Get it up, get your think tank together and get after it. Thank as, you. As Thank my you, dad, as my dad used to say, you know, son, it's time for you to get up and get out of that bed. He got another phrase that I won't use here on TV. <laughs> It started with U-N, and the first letter was A, and had two other letters behind it. It's time for you to <laughs> get out of that band. And it, he, talk in, he always spoke in country English. You never had to walk away from my dad and scratch your head and wonder, wonder what he meant by that. <laughs> <laughs> it was crystal clear. Amen. He, he, he knew he had to talk real simple to me. And, uh, and also, too, that's an important thing for us to point out here. When you're communicating with someone, talk to them in simple terms. Oh, anyway, yeah. you know, I, yeah. I designed uh, my book and how I explain how to handle money. So mm -hmm. even someone with a PhD can understand it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And I, I like it because uh, people understand and they relate to people that talk their language. When you talk, you know, just simple English and stuff like that, uh, if, if someone is real sophisticated and they, they only like proper terms and all that, that's okay. Just say Salahilo Holapala and have a nice day and go on. <laughs> <laughs> and namaste. Yes. Yeah, namaste, yeah. Um, let's, the, one of the, uh, the next forms, and mm -hmm. it's the last... Is it the last tool? It might be the last tool. Let me it's look called, here at my list here. You uh, want the balance sheet, cash flow sheet, memory jogger? Okay. Okay. So this is, yeah, the memory jogger is the one I haven't spoken about yet. Right, right, And right. And that's what helps you when you're filling out where your money's going mm -hmm. and you don't remember. And they're all categorized in that someone will say, well, I don't have any clothing expenses. I don't buy clothing. Well, guess what? Maybe you bought a pair of shoes or socks or accessories or jewelry, mm -hmm. or you've gone to the tailor or the dry cleaners, or you took your clothes to the laundromat, or you mm -hmm. got your shoes repaired. Those are all clothing expenses. Yeah. And people forget about that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, the funny example is I didn't bother tracking uh, the money Oh, that was the fifth tool. It's the spending plan register. Yeah. I wasn't writing down the money I was giving to my kids when they needed money. I figured mm. it's not enough to bother tracking. Yeah, it adds up. I don't up. know. One day I decided I should track this. It was $900 a month mm. I was giving the kids. Mm. That's like real money. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. You know, a hundred here, a hundred there. Sooner or later, it adds up to real money. Yeah, no kidding. That's about like a you know, a, some places, a good places, that's like a half a month's of rent, nine hundred dollars a month. You know, yeah, it really is. And goodness, you know, it's uh, it, it's amazing how a good example. How many times I remember years ago, I'd have like two or maybe four, four twenty dollar bills in my wallet. I've never mm -hmm. carried much money on me. So if a mugger ever, you know, <laughs> mugged me, he'd probably feel sorry for me and give me a tip or something, you know. <laughs> but uh, you open up your wallet and you go like, wait a minute. I've only got 120 left, a 10 and five and some cents. Where'd all this money go to? And you cannot figure it out. And you know you were present when every dollar was spent. Yep. So if you if you can relate to that, you can easily understand what... Rennie is talking about, you need to keep a record because it adds up in a hurry. Yes. It and sneaks I, up on you. I designed a little spending register that looks a little bit like uh, the old fashioned checkbook registers. Mm -hmm. Just got three columns for the different categories that you want to track, like meals out or groceries or auto expenses, whatever. And you can know in five to 10 seconds, 
where your money's gone, and you can measure the level of pleasure based on where you spent your money. Ooh. That's how I discovered I'd rather eat out than buy groceries. Mm -hmm. And without tracking it, without asking yourself the question, did I get the level of pleasure I just paid for? You, mm. you don't know if you're spending money where you want to be spending it. And by the way, this is not about budgeting. Budgeting is mm. about lack and sacrifice and deprivation. I'm talking about a spending plan. I'm talking mm. about spending money in alignment with the goals you want to achieve. Yeah. Treating yourself a little in the process. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Reward yourself. I mean, you know, a lot of people uh, reward yourself whenever you do little things around the house. I remember uh, there for a while I got into a good habit and I've gotten out of it and it's a self reminder. I need to get back in it. I used to have a habit just say, thank you, Lord, for any and every little thing that worked. And we've got a comment up here. Let me click on it here. And uh, oh, Michaela Vidal says it's definitely a good idea to track, especially with so many things being automated payments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I yeah. always forget, forget these subscriptions. I have until they come out of my account. Amen. Mm -hmm. and, and that's extremely important. And, uh, you know, it's, it just goes to show you when, you know, money gets taken out of your, your, your account automatically, you don't see it. That's right. And so it's not present in your mind. That's and, absolutely. Uh, oh, and that's, that's the good. important thing about what you were talking about, where all of a sudden you look in your wallet and you know yeah. <laughs> all that money was gone. You were present to it. Yeah. And the spending register allows you to say, where did that money go? And was mm -hmm. it worth it? Yes. And it only takes, like I said, five to 10 seconds for each transaction. Mm. And that's a lot, That's what allowed me to see. Uh, I'd rather, like I said, eat out than buy groceries that mm -hmm. I was spending $900, giving my kids $900 a month. I mean, mm. I had an attorney who was short $12,000 to pay his income taxes. He's making, he was making 180,000 a year at that time. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, I want you to track your money. He says, oh, do I have to? I said, you know, you only have to do it let's six weeks. Six weeks, you can stop, but let's see what's happening. We got back together uh, and he was guessing at how much he spent eating out. He said, oh, I probably spend $600 a month eating out. Well, when he tracked it, it wasn't $600 a month. You want to know what it was? About $1,400? $1,600 a month. That's an extra $1,000 a month he spent eating out. He literally ate the $12,000 he needed to pay his income taxes. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yeah, but I'll just... tell you, after he did that, he changed his ways. Mm -hmm. He paid off $70,000 in credit card debt over mm -hmm. the next few years. He was able to buy a new car, take his family on vacation and pay for it in full. I mean, his life transformed once he found out when he became conscious of where he was spending his money. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Because you know, you can't fix a tire. It's got a hole in it till you know where the hole is. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. I mean, I mean yeah. I, that might be you a country way. just put a way. patch on the outside. doesn't do you any good. That's right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just amazing because, uh, you know, it's, you don't realize what your, what, where the, where the leakage is. Until and if you write it down. Until you write it down. Yeah. That, that is so true. And, um, you know, I've gotten a habit, uh, like I was going to say before I read the comment there about giving thanks for every little thing. And I told this one guy, I said, yeah, I've cut a lot of firewood today. And I said, I really, you know, I was tired and I got done. I thanked the good Lord as I laid down in bed after I took a shower. And I'm going to rest now for the night. Thank you, good Lord, that that chainsaw started. He says, you're kidding me. I says, sometimes by the time I get that darn thing cranked and I took it up to the manufacturer i'm up to the repair shop several times they tell me it's fine but sometimes trying to crank that thing by the time i get a crank i'm already tired you know <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah so when you give thanks like that and be thankful for everything because that will set your mindset into you know receiving and you got to have a receiver's mindset yeah to be able to recognize good things when they come your way and Gratitude be able to share is. with others oh yeah 
Oh, Gratitude yeah. is so important. I have yeah. a daily prayer and I'll share it with you right now. Sure, the daily please, prayer yeah. is, God, thank you for my blessings. Thank you for my prosperity. Thank you for my health. Thank you for my relationships. Mm -hmm. Please grant your blessings to all those that you desire, that you feel are deserving. Amen. Amen. You're exactly right about that because... Uh, Goodness gracious, uh, like I tell people sometimes, and I still do this, sometimes I wake up in the morning, I say, thank you, Lord, you know, the lights are on, you know, and I'm home <laughs> at least most of the time. Because I tell people, you know, I thank God for the little things in life, like the heartbeat in my veins and the breath in my lungs. Because you stop and think about that. If your heart quits pumping or if you can't breathe, you're not going to have a good day. And there's going to be a real good even <laughs> money chance by the time the, the, the clock strikes midnight tonight, you're going to be down there shaking hands with the undertaker. You yeah. know what I mean? I mean, it's, uh, it, it, you know, see, that's something that's a gift to us. Our heart beat in our veins, a breath in our lungs, but we take it for mm -hmm. granted. Yeah. I mean, look at look at us when we get sick. I'm a prime example. After about four or five days, I'm sick and tired of being sick, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you know, rather than giving thanks that you're able to, you know, have the the the, the nutrients and, and all the vitamins and stuff, the medicines that you need to help you get over it. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, but we're we're such an express lane, you know, type of people. We want we want to be well and we want to be well now. It's kind of like a happy. I want to be happy and I want to be happy now. <laughs> well, well, why aren't you happy now? <laughs> yeah, that's an inside job. It ain't coming from the outside. There you go. There you go. Yeah, the inside job. I mean, you you can work on that. The outside job, like, you know, if one side of your face don't match the other, well, that's one of them personnel <laughs> kind of problems, you know. <laughs> but there's a lot of good things you can do for that too. But my point being is that be thankful for what you got. Be prudent with what you have and realize that there are people in this world that will look at you because if you live in the United States of America on the world standard, you're rich. Oh, yeah. Just we've got yeah. paved roads to drive on, books oh, in the yeah. library you can read for free, oh, internet yeah. access. Mm. You don't have to pay for it when you go to the yeah. library. Yeah. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. And uh, you take, for example, if someone from a third world country that lived in a mud hut walked up to your residence and saw what you had where you lived, I don't care if you owned it or rented it. Yeah. And they would think, what? Wow, this person's got money. Yeah, darn right. And if they knocked on the door and says, we're hungry, could you, or I'm hungry, could you give me $20? For food, you would probably say what? No, I don't have it. Mm -hmm. Chances are. Or, you know, some people might say, well, uh, I'll take and get you some groceries. Where, where are you going to deliver it to or something like that? But that's a different realm. My point yep. is, you're, in your mind, you're going to say, I don't have it. Okay, let's say that you and I are, are out on a fundraiser and we walk up to some multimillionaire's house and we think, oh, boy, this is <laughs> we're, we're going to get something here. We ring the doorbell and hi, we're representing X, Y, Z, nonprofit, da, 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 da. Uh, I'm sorry. We already have given what we we can and we don't have any more. And we, we would leave there thinking, what? Are you nuts? Just like the person that lived in a mud hut came to your house yep. and you told them, you told them you cannot buy them twenty dollars worth of groceries, they wouldn't be able to understand that. So you yep. need to give thanks right now for what you got because what you have and where you're at right now is the perfect place for you. But you can grow and expand if you listen to what Rennie is teaching you there. I encourage you to get his book, Wealth on Any Income. I don't get a penny from it or anything like that. Rennie did not pay anything. In fact, I should be paying him to be on the TV show with all the information he shared. But my point being, invest in yourself. People want everything free today, but you know what? You ever known any millionaire get rich on just getting free things? No. You know, and, and that's the perfect lead in to the 5,000 year old secret I want to talk about. All right, let's do it. Okay. And I, I may have said it in the past that you want to treat yourself like you deserve to own some of the money you're working for. And the way that you do that has been around for 5,000 years. Mm. And a lot of people have heard of it, 
And I think I even asked you and Tanya one time, you know, to explain what does it mean to pay yourself first? Mm -hmm. And that's a 5,000 year old concept. And you can read about it in the book, The Richest Man in Babylon, where they actually transcribe tablets that were excavated from the city of Babylon over a hundred years ago. And that city was one of the wealthiest city states in the world 5,000 years earlier because mm -hmm. they understood the concept, pay yourself first. Yeah. Now, the thing about that is there's two areas that the money needs to go to. Remember I was talking about the start items that are mm -hmm. expenses you don't plan for on a monthly basis? Yes. For most people, if they just set aside 10% of their income, it'll take care of those unplanned expenses that don't show up every month. Whether it's auto insurance or back to school clothing or property mm -hmm. taxes, it's generally about 10% of someone's income. Mm -hmm. And if they set aside another 10%, which is the most important to create financial freedom or complete financial choice, the 10% they set aside is the money they keep for the rest of their life. The first 10% I talk about will get spent later. Mm -hmm. That second 10% never gets spent. Mm. It only goes to investments that will generate an income. So the mm. bottom line is a simple formula that no one I've heard of has ever been taught is that if you just live on 80% of your income, everything works out. Wow. You could be as foolish as you want when you're younger with that 80%, as long as you've done these other two items, 10% to spend later, 10% to keep for the rest of your life. And for you folks out there that by the 20th of the month, you've ran out of money and you still got at least 10, 11 days left in the month. You're probably thinking, how in the world can we live on 80% and save 20%? You need to get Rennie's book, Wealth on Any Income. Dot com. Go there and get that book because if you want to change your life, you got to invest in yourself first. You richest man in Babylon. What what they do? They paid who they pay first? Themselves. Themselves. So invest in yourself first. And again, I don't get any uh, proceeds from that, not a penny or anything like that, because I know the value of what that book will do for you. And I know Rennie. And Rennie and I, we go back uh, a little, little ways, not long, yeah. but a little ways, but enough to know each other that uh, we have a lot in common. We have the same kind of heart. We have the same type of mindset. We don't take failure seriously. We don't let anyone discourage us. Because just between me and you, don't tell anybody else I said that. <laughs> but in my life, I have found that opinions are like rear ends. Some are bigger than others. <laughs> and, you know, don't let anyone rob you of your dream. Don't let anyone tell you you can't do it. You are a mind with a body. And go with your gut feeling. Keep your mind on the things you want, off the things you don't want. And I don't care if you got to get up early and work late and work on weekends. But you know what? Because... You're going to reach your goal if you've set a realistic goal that's measurable. It's specific. It's measurable. It has action to it. It's realistic. And it has a deadline that you're going to do it. And, you know, what I've found in life, when you set a deadline for something to meet, normally you meet it before it comes. Yes, and I always wished it was like that when I was in school and running races. You know, that that finish line never did come to meet me. I always had to go to it, you know. <laughs> and all the other kids were faster than me. So, you know, <clears throat> that's why I, uh, you know, that's why I didn't go out for the track, track team, you know. They told me two days was too long to wait for me for some reason. <laughs> yeah, especially for the 440. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. That's yeah. Right. And it's funny too, because uh, you're talking about that. It reminds me of when I got out of college and my first job was as a school teacher and I was the track coach. Mm. Yeah. I taught uh, track and wrestling mm. and, and art. If that's not yeah. a funny combination, I don't oh, know. What yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, you mean our wrestling coach is also our art teacher? Yep. <laughs> yeah. I tell you, that means you're going to look good when you're wrestling too, you know, getting those, <laughs> getting those different uh, holes and positions. And earlier, I forgot to mention this when I said I was going to give you folks a free, a free gift, a free trial. Go to the six minute webinar.com. You see our sponsor link there, six minute webinar.com forward slash, then put behind it free trial. You can get your very own six minute webinar for free. You can try it for free. Rennie tried the six minute webinar. And what was that? I know it was a three hour workshop you attended. Yeah, you yeah. first thought, why, why did it take three hours why to did fill it take out a six? Three hours to produce something in six minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, there's a lot of people in there and they were helping everybody and that ate up a lot yep. of time. But give them an honest opinion on this six minute webinar. Uh, it, it's absolutely amazing from the standpoint of the level of clarity that it creates. So I could, I was able to communicate what needed to be said so much more clearly, so much mm -hmm. more efficiently. And as a matter of fact, uh, before we started this program, I used the six minute webinar structure so that what I was presenting here would be clear, would be concise, would have an impact mm -hmm. and people would get value from it. And yeah. so I've been using it and it's fabulous. I think yeah. it's the greatest tool I've ever seen. And I can assure you, because Ben uh, Rennie knows Mr. Bill Heinrich uh, and Don yep, McGrath. I do. I call him Dandy Don. And when you register for that to try the free trial, they will not chase you down and try to sell you something. And I'd like to tell you this, and Rennie, I think you were there. Um, in fact, I know you were there on that. Uh, I was there in the same workshop as you. But uh, Whenever they go through the six minute webinar and everybody gets their six minute webinar and they start reading it for themselves, then they go, oh, my goodness, this is amazing because those workshops are three hours long. No bio breaks and nobody leaves. But do you know what the closing percentage is? If you want to use closing percentage, brother, what the buying percentage is of people want to buy the VIP program and the other programs that they have there? I I'm going to guess it's high because I know I bought it. Yeah, over 70%. Wow. And that anybody is, anybody that knows anything about marketing know that's off the chart. So therefore, yeah. these guys don't have time to chase down you and try to sell you something that you may not want. And yeah. uh, we don't play that game. We offer that for free because with, with a buying ratio of over 70% of the people wanting more from you, I mean... Wouldn't you like 70% of the people you advertise to to buy from you? Oh, I mean, that, <laughs> that, that rate that ratio is so high. I mean, I'm in so many mastermind groups where mm -hmm. people talk about their webinars and their programs and how many people buy the upsell that that's, I mean, the best, that's a hundred percent beyond the best results I've heard. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, the thing that makes it so uh, attractive is that it's just a real simple answer to solve your problem. So go to, you know, the website there, six minute webinar dot com forward slash free trial. And you be the judge. And I just realized because I failed high school math. If the best percentage was 35 and you're doing 70, that's 200%, not 100% better. Okay. Well, I, I'll take a hundred. I mean, you know. <laughs> I just, I, you know, I, I wish I did better in high school math, but Hey, it didn't mm. stop me from creating wealth. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, ladies and gentlemen, our time is almost gone. We got about 20 seconds left. And uh, it, I was told Rennie, if we got about 20 seconds left, I'm going to share everything I know with the audience. And he told me, please don't. <laughs> so I won't. But we want to personally thank you for tuning in today. This TV show will be downloaded and edited. It will be uploaded to our YouTube channel tonight. The YouTube channel is Messages of Inspirational Stories TV Show. So be sure and look for that. And we want to thank you so much for tuning in because people that you know that could use the information Rennie's got, you know where to send them to. They can watch part one, part two, and this is part three, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And he's going to be back tomorrow. We're going to be, Donna's going to be with us tomorrow. And then Friday, we'll do the wrap up with Donna. But we are so grateful that you're here because this show right here, this five day show, 
with Rennie's book, Wealth on Any Income Can Change Your Life. Rennie, thank you so much for being with us today, my brother. Thank you, Jim. It's, thank it, you. It's my honor. It's my honor to have you here because it's so hard for me to talk intelligent. So that's why I have an intelligent <laughs> guest on here to talk. No, but seriously, you know, having great guests, providing value, that's why our show is so popular all over the world. And for folks who watch us on Roku, Amazon, uh, Fire, and Apple TV, and all that, I mean, 20%, almost 20% of our audience is on Roku. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for allowing us to be in your home or on your computer, on your cell phone, wherever we might come in at. Thank you so much. We sincerely appreciate it. Most importantly, love yourself first, then you can love others. And if it's your birthday just between me and you, I voted on this and I was unanimous on that vote. All birthday cakes and sweets that you love, that's health food on your birthday. So you be sure and treat yourself. <laughs> we'll, <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.